Hi everybody, Captain Bill Safe the Third. Wanted to get into the action here with you a little more quickly than I did. So you can see I'm moving this rod right here. She just locked up, stoved up heavy with the big fish. But my buddy Roger Bellrose is locked in battle with just a dandy. Across the entrance of Bear Creek right here and doubled on the inside. And look at the torque on this fish. I mean, he is a jumbo. Just took the weight rods out just to make sure that we had a clean bill of health here at the back of the boat. We're uh, just dancing around this line right here. I'm holding it high to make sure that Roger's fish can come in underneath this line. We're just doing the do-si-do -si -do once we get Roger's fish cleared. Then he'll take the wheel and his brother Chuck will come down and hit this. Are we under or over? Okay, that's the way we want to go. Go over the top of my head? Yep. Important to pay attention to what these fish are doing at the back of the boat. Monofilament on monofilament can cause all kinds of crazy problems. You don't want that to touch when you're fighting these big fish. And our tip today on Lake Ontario is gonna be about keeping your lines running clean, making sure that you don't touch other fishing gear and lose that. And I'm gonna demonstrate in our tech segment here on Brown Trout Fishing today, why you wanna wet your knots when you tie down and why you wanna keep those monofilament or co-filament lines from touching each other in the fishing process. You're going to be absolutely astounded and amazed if you haven't seen this demonstration before. Dad and I used to do it in our seminars and clinics all around the Northeast. We're going to share it with you here at the end of today's video. Big fish obviously coming on board here in Lake Ontario today. We're still high with this rod making sure that we don't get into Roger's fish. Now we're gonna drop this rod back into the holder, keeping it high. Roger, all the way to the right now. All your other right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Since these uh, alewives have moved in, neutral, you know all Lake Ontario species forward have an affinity for moon eyes and it's made the bite a little bit lighter. Keep it in gear now, Chuck. We're coming on the action. This fish is snaking right in here at the back of the boat. Don't force him until it where he's absolutely ready, okay, Rod? Because he is a jumbo, jumbo, jumbo brown neutral. I mean, just doing whatever he wants. He has it forward, an amazing will on this fish. We all know the deal. We know the Bill Safe principle here on brown trout fishing. Neutral, if he looks big in the water, he's gonna look huge in the net. Forward, wind down one more time. Keep his head up if you can. Don't let him touch any gear. One more time, Raj. Wait, wait him out there. He's gonna have his way here one more time. Wind, okay. Neutral. All I'm doing is having Chuck take the pressure off this fish. Big old boy. Wind down. Okay, lead him up. Lead him to me. Lead him to me. Lead him. Got him. Big old brown right here in the net. Forward, Chuck. Just an ab. <laughs> Absolute slammer on the Kevorkian blue there with the glow tape coming over the top of that thing. Good Buddy that fish, boy. Huh? Uh, is that Read good? Look at <laughs> that. That, that is super. Oh, yeah. What a beautiful, beautiful fish. Brown. That is a good one. And Chuck's fish is still here beating on the line. We're in the line. Let's get Chuck back here to get that. And then we're going to show everybody this big brown and we're going to talk a little bit about keeping those lines apart. Here he is, just an enormous brown. I'm trying to stay out of the wind here today. We got a steaming west wind. Chuck, how do you feel, buddy boy? <laughs> that was a good one, wasn't it? Awesome. Great. We always get some good fish. There's that fat Nancy right there. Signature spoon. You know, coming out of Fat Nancy's Tackle Shop there in Plasky, New York. A signature spoon of the eastern basin of Lake Ontario. Coming down to the south shore and having its way with some big jumbo browns. You know, the bite's been a little bit tricky the last couple days. And one of the reasons that it's been tricky is that we've had copious amounts of alewives that have come in on the shoreline. So, 
these browns are fed up on gobies, they're fed up on smelt, they're fed up on alewives, and it's making it tricky on the bite. So if you look at the weather conditions here today, anytime you see in the forecast a little wind, especially in that 5 to 15 knot range, it's workable with planer boards. Even though the shoreline waters are a bit clear today, those waves and that surface breakup make it a unique set of circumstances for catching those fish. It diffuses the light and gives us an opportunity to get on them. Okay, everybody, there's one, uh, there's two tips here that we're going to share with you in today's video. And the first is uh, how to release a tangled line. We had a brown swim across the planer board set up and as it came to the back of the boat, it was carrying this spoon. We netted the fish, we got it in, um, we put that fish in the bucket, but now it's coming time to release this. We want to make sure everything's running clean. No, 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 we know that it's, that's all right, we got a fish on there, but look at this rod tip right here. We know that this is the rod, stand up straight, you can see it bumping, I've got this spoon in my hand. It's easy to tell which one it is. Nine out of 10 anglers, are just gonna grab this spoon by the hooks. They're gonna throw the spoon, drop it. You don't know what happens. You don't know if that spoon comes over and hooks into itself and now it's trolling all cattywampus back there in the water, nothing's working right. So whether you're spoon fishing or whether you're plug fishing, you need to release these spoons the proper way. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come right over here with the camera. My buddy Chuck Bellrose is filming and I'm gonna show you the proper way to release this spoon. Come right over the side here, Chuck. I'm going to move this rod out of the way. You see this spoon hanging. What you're going to do is you're going to take this line and you're going to swing that spoon. You want it to lead back in the water column. So you're going to place it forward in the water and then you let the spoon go. That way the billow in the line is always leading that spoon forward. Even though you're making forward motion, and it's the furthest line out on the planer board. When you lay it alongside the boat and let the billow of the line take the spoon, the spoon is always going to swim back under pressure. It's going to round the corner as, it, as, as the line starts to become tight, and then it's going to swing back out into the proper position behind the planer board. You never got to worry about a tangled bait on a release from a tangled line. That's the way you need to put the plug baits or the spoon baits back in the water to always ensure that they're running correctly. Now let's go dockside and we'll take a look at tip two. Hi everybody, Captain Bill Safe the Third. We're back um, dockside. Here's tip two in today's brown trout fishing segment. With two, three, four fish on all at once here today on Lake Ontario. Some fish are bigger than others, so you're getting planer board lines as they're coming in that are crossing. You need to be proactive running the back of the boat. You know, whether you're a skipper or you're just a weekend warrior, you need to make sure that you're looking at that stuff, that you're knit one, purl two, coming under, doing whatever you have to do to keep those lines separated. We've always talked about how co-filament line, monofilament line, heat and line to line is going to cause problems. You're going to cut those fish off. That's why you need to keep them untangled in the fishing process. When you're tying a knot, you'll see the good fishermen, before they pull that knot down, they'll soak the knot in their mouth and get it wet and then pull the barrel of that improved clinch down. The reason that they do that is because friction creates heat Heat is the number one enemy to monofilament or co-filament line. So my buddy Roger Bellrose is here, and I just want to show you a little demonstration, wrap that right in a couple times, that my dad and I used to do at seminars and clinics in the Northeast. This is 20 pound test big game. Come on right in here, Chuck. This, if we tie a 100% knot on this line, will have a break strength of about 30, 31 pounds. So I've got this spool tight in my hand. I'm taking just a paper towel that I took off the dash, just dry. Here's what happens when it goes line to line. I'm just gonna put that paper towel, pull tight, Rod, watch this. That's how fast that monofilament or that co-filament comes apart just with heat and friction. So critically important 
talked about a couple things, giving you a couple different tips, but one of them is on heat and friction and monofilament line. Make sure those lines don't touch in the fishing process. That's why we, when you watch our videos, we're meticulous about moving the angler around into the free corner, pulling rods that we think are high options for getting us in trouble, clearing corners so that we can br bring those big, boat, big browns up to the back of the boat. And that's why even fishing, 15 pound test co-filament line and 15 pound test fluorocarbon tippet, you see the bulk of the captains on the safe charter fleet take more 10 pound plus browns than probably anybody else on Lake Ontario. That's the reason it's attention to detail. The devil's always in the detail. Make those arrangements ahead of time so when that big fish comes to the corner, you have created the proper situation to slide the nylon under that big trophy. I'm Captain Bill Safe the Third. Those are your tips here from the back deck of the Safe Charter Number Five.